Hello, hello, good morning. It's Monica from Life is Art, and this is the Friday 10 a.m. technique at the It's a Mystery online crop. I hope you've had a chance this morning to check out the second chapter of our mystery that we're working on solving over the course of the crop, uh, and also taken a look at the first game for the day, as well as the challenges. And um, so I, you know, I encourage you to work on those games as they come through, because some of them are going to be, some if not all, are going to be important clues for solving the mystery. Good morning, Laura. Nice to see you're watching. If you're popping on to watch, just say hello or howdy so I know you're here. And uh, if you're watching later on, you can say replay so I know who uh, had a chance to view the video later on. Um, we are going to be creating a double slider card uh, today. And I thought that was kind of fun because one of the sort of interesting, intriguing things about mysteries, I find, is that there's always something that's a little bit hidden. There's always, you know, the secret drawer or the panel behind the wall, or there's always something hidden. And a, a double slider card has hidden secrets inside of it. And so I thought that would be kind of fun and thematic to do during our crop. Good morning, Mom. Nice to see you're watching. Good morning, Deborah. Oh, you're loving the character names. Yes, did you notice that? Yes, um, you know, Lady Distress and uh, Ranger Manor and uh, things like that. Yes, you may have noticed that. And good morning, Mary. Good morning, good morning. Oh, Laura, you replayed everything from yesterday. Fabulous. You're all caught up now. Good morning, Carol. And also Heather's joining today. Woohoo! We're getting a full house here. Okay, so we are going to be making a double slider card and we're going to be using things from the Are We There Yet collection from the new catalog. This is our featured collection at Close to My Heart for the month of January. And you know what? I think we're all just in that mood where we're thinking about going places. Maybe we've even gone some places over the past year. Um, but if you're like me, I have pictures from before <laughs> COVID and everything that I haven't yet scrapbooked. So I'm going to be using, um, some pattern paper, some cardstock, as well as some stamps from this collection. I'm going to be using the scrapbooking, uh, stamp set and thin cuts for this card as well. So that's where we're headed today. Let's get started. Let me just put my catalog away. So it's out of, out of the way. Okay, so let me also grab my measurements so that I don't steer you wrong when it comes to the sizes of things that's been known to happen. <laughs> the first thing we need to start out with for our double slider card is we need a piece of um, cardstock that has been cut to three and a half inch square. And I'm just using white daisy cardstock because uh, it's never going to be seen. So it doesn't have to be a nice color. It doesn't have to, it can even be one that you've, you know, stamped something on and it didn't work out, you know, pull something out of your scrap bin. Um, so a three and a half inch square. Okay. Good morning, Joanne. No worries. We're just getting started. So we're starting with our three and a half inch square. And the next item that we need is something a little different. And that is a piece of plastic. <laughs> And it needs to be flexible plastic. And I really, really, really encourage you to use a uh, sturdy enough plastic to do this because you don't want your card to not succeed once you've got it put together. So what I recommend and what I use is a piece of um, memory protector. So I use memory protectors when I'm doing like odd shaped shaker cards and various other you know, techniques and things. So I always have one or two 12 by 12 page protectors that have been chopped into. And I keep them in my my drawer beside me here where I keep my um, scrap white daisy and scrap black cardstock. And that way, if I need just a little chunk of um, 
plastic for something, but sturdy enough that it's not going to stretch and skew and everything, I can just use a piece of memory protector. So it's a good thing to keep on hand. Good morning, Carrie. Good morning, good morning. Oh, you're joining us from Arizona, Carrie. Awesome. And Shannon's here. <laughs> oh, my mom loves Arizona. <laughs> they spent a winter down in Arizona with their RV. All right. So this piece of plastic is two inches by eight inches. So we're going to take our two inch by eight inch piece. And I know it's hard for you to kind of see it. But what I'm going to do is on the two inch side, I'm actually going to turn it vertically here. On the two inch length, I'm going to take some of my red tape. And red tape is um, really, really sticky, double-sided adhesive. Um, think score tape, think sukwang tape, think all those things that are the nice sticky ones that you like to put in interactive cards, right? Because you know that they're going to stick well. And it also sticks to, um, to plasticky things. <laughs> so I'm going to put a strip of this. Where did I drop my scissors? Along, right along the edge of one of the two inch edges, just like that, okay? So I'm going to put it on here so you can see. So I've got a strip of red tape on the side that's facing up on the two inch. Now I'm going to take my strip and I'm going to flip it right over and I'm going to put another strip on the back side on the opposite edge two inch end. Now, where did I leave the, the end of my sticky tape? My super sticky red tape. There we go. Okay. All done with that. Okay, so now we have red tape at both ends, but on opposite sides. Does that make sense? So we've got tape on, on the facing upside at this end. And then if we flip it right over, we've got tape on the st sticking up side on this end, okay? So now what we want to do is we want to put our um, three and a half inch cardstock in the center of our plastic. Then I'm going to remove the adhesives, and this is where you have to be a little bit octopusy because <laughs> you need a, you know, an extra hand. Um, I'm going to remove the adhesives from my um, plastic. So the piece of plastic that does not have the adhesive facing the cardstock is the one you're going to lay down first because you don't want to stick your plastic to the cardstock. The plastic is going to slide around this piece of cardstock. So none of it needs to be stuck to the cardstock. Okay? So I've laid down the side with the tape facing up. Then I'm going to kind of adjust my paper so that um, so that the plastic is up against the edge here. I don't want to crease my plastic. I just want to make sure that it's kind of, you know, wrapped around it close enough that it's not all over the place, but not too tight that it won't slide. Does that make sense? It's kind of one of those delicate balance things. But this is really slippery um, plastic because it's the page memory protectors. And then I'm going to take the part that has the sticky side facing down and I'm going to wrap it around and hopefully line it up decently well with the plastic that is sitting there. And hopefully none of the sticky tape will be stuck to the cardstock. You should be able to still get something under the cardstock, nothing stick and it should slide back and forth with no issues, okay? Now, because the memory protectors are pretty sturdy, it might even sort of bow your, um, your paper, but when you push it down flat like this, it should still loop nicely around the edges and slide back and forth, okay? Easy peasy, right? <laughs> Clear as mud. So now we've got our plastic loop around our cardstock. You could even pull it right off at the moment. Okay. Put your seam in the center of the card and kind of center the plastic from top to bottom. The next thing we need is we need two pieces of cardstock that have been cut to four inches by two and three eighths. Okay. So four inches by two and three eighths. And I chose the honey butter. 
that name might sound familiar if you've read chapter 2 of our mystery. So we've got two um, pieces of honey butter that are 4 inches by 2 and 3 eighths. And 3 eighths is halfway between a quarter inch and a half inch. So it's just right in between there if you're not familiar with eighths. What I want to do with these two pieces, I actually want to round the corners on one end of each of these. So I'm going to just round with my scissors. If you have a corner rounder, you can do that too. This is more, more of an aesthetic thing than a mechanism thing, but I just think rounding the corners kind of makes it look nice. But what I want to do is I want to round opposite corners. So I've rounded the corners on the right hand side of this one. So I'm going to round the corners of the left hand side on this one, which while it's sitting here makes no difference because I can just flip it one way or the other. <laughs> but it will make sense when we put it into our card. <laughs> Now, I am going to do this a little bit differently than a lot of um, double slider cards. So if you've made a double slider card in the past, at this point, you may be told to decorate these two pieces, okay? But what I'm going to do is I'm going to decorate them after I have assembled all my cards, which might not work in every instance. That's why I'm saying it now. So depending on what your card is going to look like at the end, you may want to decorate these two panels right now. Okay, so if you're watching this on replay um, and, you know, to, to play it again so you can follow along and create, now would be the time to decorate if you're going to do it um, with a lot of things on here. I'm going to do mine after because then I don't have to worry about whether I've put my decorations in the right spot because I will know where the right spot is and I won't mess it up and sometimes that's a problem for me. <laughs> so you know you, you do you. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my red tape and I'm going to put some red tape right along um, near the edge of the plastic that's on this front side of my card that's sitting here like that. Okay, so just a strip, just like we did before, and just along the edge here, okay? And I'm going to remove the backing, like so. And then I'm going to take my first panel where I've got the, the rounded edges facing towards the right, so opposite where the sticky tape is. And I'm going to attach my card so that the card is pretty close to the edge of um, the three and a half inch. It doesn't have to be right on the edge and try to make it level so it goes across evenly um, across the three and a half inch card. Okay, so there we've got one panel. Now we're going to take this and we're going to flip it over like so and we're going to put tape on this side. So you see how the first panel is kind of sticking out the edge here? We're going to add our tape along this edge, and I'm going to have to turn it because um, it just works better with my hands. <laughs> so we're going to add some red tape just along here. So this is now the right side of the plastic, making sure that none of it is touching that three and a half white daisy underneath. Okay, so there we go. So now we've got red tape on this side. We're going to remove the red tape, like so, and we're going to take this panel, and I'm actually going to flip it over so that both of my dark sides of my honey butter are showing from the, the side that's facing my Versamat. So I'm going to flip it over, and this is one of those spots where it helps to not have already decorated the cards, because if you flip it over and it's upside down and backwards and all sorts of things, Later on, it's a real pain to change, but if you haven't decorated it, it's okay, even if you get it the wrong way around. Nobody will care. You just decorate it so that it all looks good when you're done. Now we're going to do the same thing, but this time I've got my flat edge here, and I've got my rounded edge pointing to the left. My sticky tape is here on the right, and I'm going to do the same thing where I lined it up pretty close to the edge. I also want to try and keep in a line with the yellow card that's below 
and put it level all the way across. Now this seems a bit a bit tedious, and it might be, <laughs> but once you've tried it, it's it's okay. Okay. So now, who? There goes the card. We know it slides well when it falls out like that. So now, if you um, move your plastic, oh, it's going to be hard because there's nothing holding it in place. Your plastic should move, and your two cards should move out and um, go in opposite directions, right? So one goes to the right, one goes to the left. Okay, now we need to keep them in place. So I have my half-inch foam tape here, and I'm going to put a, this half-inch foam tape right near the edge of my white daisy cardstock, all the way across, and trim it off, okay? So it fits all the way across. I'm going to turn it around. I'm going to do the other side. Now, now it makes no difference which side is the front, which side is the back. Um, we just need to get foam tape on all these edges. Okay, so there we go. And then we're going to flip it over, and we're going to do the same thing on this side. And I can tell the way that I stuck down my foam tape, it's warping my cardstock, but it should be all good <laughs> once I get it stuck together. It's just how I stuck it down the first time. And then I'm going to come and I'm going to add more foam tape over here. And you have to use foam tape that is the right width so that you're not interfering with the sliding motion of your mechanism. Okay? So make sure that's stuck down really well so that none of the little edges of the plastic can kind of trap itself under that foam tape. All right. Now we're going to decide which side's the dark and which side's the light. So this is the dark side of my honey butter. And for you, it may not matter when, hoot, um, which way it goes, okay? So I'm going to take the backing off the back side of my card, and I'm going to bring in a piece of sapphire cardstock. And I've actually cut two of these. So I have two pieces of sapphire cardstock that are four inches. Okay, so I'm just going to set one there, and I'm going to put the other one here. And I want my the dark side to be on the outside of my card. So I'm going to flip this over and line it up on my Versamat. I'm going to have to do this at a bit of an angle, so bear with me. <laughs> so we've got our four-inch piece. We're going to take the sticky side of our foam tape, and we're going to apply this whole panel centered in the middle of that four inch piece of cardstock and stick it down. Okay, so now we've got this whole little sandwich happening here, but we need to put a top, a top sheet on our sandwich. So we're going to remove the backing off the top of our foam tape on this side and now we can bring in our second piece of sapphire. And what I like to do is to line it up here at the bottom so that I kind of have a good idea that it's going to line up. And then sort of line it up along the side as well. And then just hope for the best and stick it down. <laughs> you ever do that where you just all of a sudden it goes quickly? You just hope for the best and stick it down. Hey, Laura. Oh, it's a mystery to you. <laughs> So now we've made our little sandwich. Everything is stuck inside, right? And so if you were intending on decorating this early on, uh, it's too late. But I intend to decorate mine after. But now you can see that your double slider card moves in and out like that. Look at that. Love that little surprise that pops out on either side. And this is a good point in which to make sure that everything moves smoothly. Because if you go past this point and it doesn't, then <sighs> you got to start again. <laughs> All right. I have got a piece of pattern paper from that Are We There Yet collection that has all of the fantastic suitcases and, and luggage all over it. And um, it doesn't really matter which direction it goes because it's, you know, it's all, it's all the same. But this piece, I cut it to three and three quarter inch square so that it can fit on the front of my card and still have that nice sapphire showing around the edge. So I'm going to go ahead and tape that down just like that. Now I'm going to be doing very simple decorating on this um, 
because, you know, it, this is more about showing you how to make the card than how to decorate the card because, you know, everybody's got their own decorating style, right? So there is our front of our card. And let's add um, some stamped images from the Are We There Yet stamp set. So I really like this. Come away with me. I think this would be a fun card to give somebody maybe for an anniversary or a birthday. And you say, hey, let's go and do something. So we're going to do Come Away With Me. And then we're also going to stamp out the little passport and the camera because, you know, we're scrapbookers and crafters. And so no matter where we go, we're taking our camera. We've already got our luggage ready here on the front. So I've gone ahead and I've stamped the Come Away With Me using Glacier Ink just on White Daisy cardstock because that's one of the coordinating car colors for this collection. So I'll set that aside. Then I want to stamp out the camera. So I've just got a piece of white daisy here and I'm going to use papaya ink for this. Let me just scooch this to the side. I've got the back side of my Versamat flipped over here. Then I ink up my camera. Get some ink on there. And let me see, I can probably turn it this way and get both of my images that I'm going to stamp. <laughs> out of one piece of cardstock and just stamp that on there I, with um I'm used to stamping in black because I always used to only stamp with black ink um but I find especially certain colors you want to keep your stamp there just for that extra little moment to let all the ink kind of transfer and you end up with a nicer stamped image when you give it that extra little time just to sit there and Think about what it's going to do. <laughs> you know how you send a kid to the room to think about what they've done? <laughs> so we're giving the uh, the stamp time to think about what, what it's done. Okay, so now I've got my sapphire ink and I've got the passport. And I think that's kind of fun because, um, at least in Canada, I think, I mean, it's been a while, um, you know, high school since I had a passport. But um, I think our passports are blue. <laughs> I don't know if anybody else's are. And um, so I'm just going to season this up. I have used it before, but before you use a new stamp, you want to season it up. You just rub it on your hand or rub it on your arm, and then you can ink it up. And that helps to kind of take away any factory oils that might be on your stamp that would keep the um, that would keep the ink from sitting evenly on your stamp. And which is kind of funny because you think, well, there's oil on my skin. So now I've just traded factory oil for skin oil. But for some reason, it works. <laughs> so don't ask me why. It just does. Um, so now we've got our three stamped images here. I'm going to scooch my Versamat out of the way and bring in my die cut machine. There we go. And then also I'm going to need a piece of washi tape, which I didn't get out. I like using washi tape to attach my thin cuts so that they don't shift while I am die cutting. So I'm going to need the tag. I'm going to need the camera, which is way down at the bottom, and the passport, although I really don't need the passport because, I mean, it's a rectangle. I could fussy cut that, no problem, but we will use the thin cut because we're already um, thin cutting the camera. We may as well run the passport through as well. And I like to stamp before I cut. I know when close to my heart, does their um, videos and demos, they quite often do all their um, their die cutting first and then the stamping, but I am not that talented to be able to line up my stamp um, after, th <laughs> after the fact. I find it easier to line up the thin cut with the stamped image. So everybody has a preference. And again, we'll just line up our tag Basically, you just line it up until everything looks even and then stick it down just like that. One thing I would say, and this is a tip about doing die cutting, and any of you who do this have probably know this, instead of running a die cut straight through your machine, you should always put it on a little bit of an angle, and that keeps your thin cuts from, you know, warping, and um, it's a little easier on your machine, so always kind of stick them through at a bit of an angle 
So you make whatever sandwich works for your machine for using thin cuts and then just run it through. My mom has an electric one. You just, I don't know. I've never used it, but I think you just push the button and it runs through. There's no cranking involved. So <laughs> that's pretty sweet. So here we've got our images now that have been thin cut. Because I like fussy cutting, things like this, I actually almost, you know, if I wasn't doing it on camera type of thing, I probably would just have picked up my scissors and trimmed it up. But for the sake of our little demonstration here, and there are many images that um, are a little bit tricky, so it doesn't work for everything, right? Okay, so let's add our come from way on the front. Why don't we add a little bit of foam tape for this as well to kind of pop it up. You could also add some fiber to the tag because um, the thin cut cuts out the hole for the tag, which is nice. Um, so you could add a nice little something to dangle on there and add a bit of dimension to the front. I'm just going to leave it as it is. Then I want to open up my hidden panels like so. And I'm just going to go ahead and add my images on there. So, so you can see, because I just had thin cut stamped images, I wasn't doing any stamping directly onto those panels. It makes it so much easier to do the decorating after. <laughs> because I know that I'm going to be putting it on the right side. I'm going to be putting it the right way up. You know, it's not going to suddenly be the wrong way. And as somebody who occasionally, um, insert ha 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 here, <laughs> often <laughs> puts things the wrong way, um, this is a nice little safety measure for me. You know, we, we need to know our flaws, right? So let's tuck our little camera in here, just like that. And I'm kind of going a little bit in, so hopefully when I tuck these in, you don't see those images. I've kind of tucked them in far enough that you just see. You're not giving away any of this secret hidden in the double slider card. So we have created this double slider card. You can obviously add a panel on the back to write a message if you'd like, or you can have your message as part of this secret hidden spot there. We have um, used the coordinating card stocks from the Are We There Yet collection, as well as pattern paper, and then the stamped images and thin cut, and of course using that memory protector on the inside to create that double slider panel. I love how, um, because I've used that thick memory protector, when you're pushing this in, it gets to a certain point and then it just kind of clicks. You can almost feel the click where it goes so far and then it goes thook. <laughs> so you know you've arrived. Um, and yeah, so isn't that fun? And you could do anything with this, right? It doesn't have to be a travel theme. You could do all sorts of fun things. You could even put this in a mini album, you know, and have a hidden panel that pops out like that. You could add little photos in there. So many things. And of course, you can adjust the size. And you know what? There are a huge variety of ways to create this same card lots of different patterns and methods. So, you know, you just, you know, Google <laughs> double slider card and you will find lots of different ways to create this, different sizes, different shapes, so many different things. I've seen round ones with shaker panels and the sky is the limit, right? So I'm just showing you a basic one to start with here. And I thought that that was really cool. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Have a wonderful rest of the morning, and we will see you again this um, this afternoon for Craft and Chat from noon until 3. And if you're not available in the afternoon, we have Craft and Chat again in the evening from 7 to 9 p.m. plus. And the plus is because we usually go till much later. I think we were on till about 11.30 last night. So anytime that you see that Craft and Chat link still visible on the event, we are still crafting. As soon as we're all done crafting, then I, um, I turn off and delete that, that link. So if it's gone, we're done. 
And if it's still showing, then click on it and join us. All right, have a wonderful day, and we'll see you again soon. Toodaloo! Bye!